Okay, we want to uh, begin talking about corrosion in metals. We're going to start just by talking about the basic reactions that are involved. Uh, but first, I want to give you just an overview of uh, corrosion. Uh, all it is is a, a destructive electrochemical attack on some metal or ceramic. Uh, you know, you've seen this. This is very familiar to you. Here's a, a rusty old automobile that's been parked outside for a very long time. And, of course, you, we're looking at corrosion that has happened on the steel. Um, so that's one example. If you've ever worked on anything that's been stored outside for a long time, you've certainly experienced uh, a nut and bolt fusing together and not you're not being able to get them undone. Or, or maybe you've observed uh, uh, metal holes on boats that have been stuck in the seawater and uh, the corrosion that, that results there. But the bottom line is that it's a it's actually a really big deal in the United States. Uh, in fact, corrosion costs about 6.2% of the GDP per year, which in 2018 would be $1.2 trillion. So it's a, it's, it remains a huge problem. Uh, it's something that we work hard to mitigate, um, uh, and it's, it doesn't seem to be going away. Uh, I certainly have experienced it. I know I, when I was uh, in graduate school uh, in upstate New York, uh, I, I drove a 92 Chevy Cavalier. Uh, got 30 miles a gallon almost everywhere I went. Uh, probably had about close to 200,000 miles on it. And uh, I remember driving it to the junkyard one day uh, and getting paid whatever it weighed in steel, which at that time I think I got 100 bucks for it or something. And, um, you know, it, it was all because no one w could work on it because it had rusted out so much because of all the salt that had been put on the roads uh, throughout several different winters and had gotten in my on the undercarriage and just destroyed the brake calipers and, and, and everything else that's under there. So um, I'm very familiar with, <laughs> with the cost of corrosion. Um, Let's, let's begin uh, talking about corrosion and the reactions that are occurring just by using a simple example. So what we're looking at here is the corrosion of zinc in an acid solution. So if you think back to your chemistry class, you'll remember that uh, an acid solution is a, is a proton donor, so it has hydrogen ions floating around in it. Uh, there, so there's going to be two reactions that are going to occur in every corrosion reaction. Uh, the first reaction is is uh, in this case would be the zinc where the zinc gives up a couple of electrons and moves into the acid solution as a zinc ion. So zinc ion goes to the acid solution, the electrons are flowing uh, in the metal. We call this kind of reaction an oxidation reaction. Um, so that's one of the two reactions that are required. Uh, the second reaction is where the two electrons that the zinc gave recombine with two hydrogen ions from the acid solution and form hydrogen gas. This reaction, where, where the, the material accepts the electrons that have been given up by the metal, is called a reduction reaction. Um, so there's these two reactions that are required. Number one, oxidation. And I'm giving you now here the reaction in um, a more formal chemistry form where we have zinc give it going to uh, zinc ion plus two electrons, and then the reduction reaction being two hydrogen ions plus those two electrons giving us hydrogen gas. And we would write the uh, total, we'd sum these up and write that the total reaction would be zinc plus two hydrogen ions yields uh, two zinc, I uh, sorry, a zinc ion plus hydrogen gas. Um, a couple more just real brief definitions. Wherever the oxidation reaction is occurring, that's referred to as the anode. So where the metal is giving up its electrons, that's the anode. Where the electrons are recombining with whatever uh, other material they're recombining with, that's called the cathode. Okay, so that's pretty much the basics that are, that are going to be uh, needed as we go forward discussing uh, corrosion reactions in metals. Okay. Now let's move on, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a more the most familiar corrosion that we probably are all familiar with, which which is uh, rust. So how do we oxidize iron? It's a little more complex. It occurs in two steps. Uh, the first step has an oxidation reaction where iron uh, gives up two electrons and goes to an iron ion, and the reduction reaction is where we combine oxygen uh, plus water. Uh, with these two electrons that were given up by the the uh, iron to form 
uh, hydroxide. And then we total that reaction up and we end up with, there's, their, there's our sum. But in this case, this is kind of an important distinction. Remember in the zinc case, the ions were just floating around in the, in the, um, this acid solution. In this case, the iron actually forms uh, with the the hydroxide, so we have uh, FeOH2. So this is a, a an iron uh, hydroxide uh, uh, compound. So that's the first reaction. We don't have rust quite yet. The next reaction is where the 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 iron hydroxide here breaks up. It, it still ha it's still in uh, yeah it, well, it breaks up the iron gives up another electron uh, and becomes Fe3 plus so we have the reaction as follows and then the reduction reaction is is given here where we're forming uh, another more hydroxide uh, again with oxygen and water and then accepting the electrons to get a total reaction that looks like uh, just the summation of that but again now we have two FeOH3, so this is uh, uh, an iron uh, hydroxide, and that that alone is a component of rust. Sometimes it also uh, we can get iron oxide uh, uh, in an aqueous form where we form uh, iron oxide plus water, and th and that can uh, come about just by the breakdown of of uh, this iron hydroxide. So these two components is actually what we know as rust. So that's the reaction that we would have to get rust. The feature, I mean, you don't have to memorize all of these. I'm not going to test you over the, the specifics of this reaction, but I want you to be aware uh, that this is the reaction of the most common corrosion uh, that we observe, but also that these uh, compounds are formed right here. So we have the iron oxide here, the iron oxide there. So Oxidation, uh, it can cause metal ions to go into the corroding solution, but it also could cause um, the could cause the formation of insoluble compounds. In this case, rust. So those are a couple of the options that we have. Uh, in our next lecture, we'll we'll start talking about uh, electrode potentials, uh, the EMF series, uh, a little bit more about the the electrochemistry that's uh, driving uh, corrosion.